बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम अलविदा व्यूअर्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज डॉक्टर आबिद सरगानी व्यूअर्स इन टुडेस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट केनाइन डिस्टेंपर डिजीज सो एट द एंड ऑफ दिस लेक्चर यू विल बी एबल टू लर्न अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ केनाइन डिस्टेंपर एटोलॉजिकल एजेंट ससेप्टेबल होस्टेस ट्रांसमिशन पैथोजेनेसिस क्लिनिकल साइंस लियंस diagnosis possible treatment of the canine distemper prevention and prophylaxis at the end you will summarize this lecture in a short minutes so in introduction first of all canine distemper is a highly contagious and affecting the multi system viral disease of dogs and it is seen epidemiologically worldwide so clinically canine distemper is characterized by a diphasic fever it means that concurrent fever occurs one day occurs and next day does not occur so diphasic fever leukopenia and especially lymphopenia gastrointestinal and respiratory catarrh and frequently pneumonic and neurological complications occur in this disease so if we talk about the etiological agent of this disease canine distemper it's the rna enveloped virus belonging to paramyxovirus of the genus morbly virus measuring from 150 to 300 nanometer in diameter but ranges between 110 to 550 nanometers all the strains of canine distemper virus are antigenically similar and are indistinguishable by cross protection and cross neutralization tests so antigenic antigenically related to the measles and render paste viruses sometimes this question is asked frequently in various examination tests that canine distemper virus resembles to measles and render paste viruses it's a correct answer and highly contagious can spread by air or the mechanical means very delicate in the dry form and easily destroyed by environmental factors such as heat ultraviolet light humidity and visible light it means this virus is sensitive to heat light and humidity and susceptible to ph around 4.5 ether and bile salts sensitive so it means it can be destroyed at the ph of 4.4 and ether as organic solvent and bile salts virus is easily destroyed in the stomach and small intestine as sometimes the intestine of the pa intestinal or the stomach ph is acidic so it can be destroyed if we talk about the susceptible hosts of this canine distemper virus disease have been found in family canidy it means dogs fox wolf and raccoon dog family mustelidy like ferret mink skunk wallen and martin and badger otter can be affected and most proconidy means raccoon and cotimundi can be affected by this disease some of the viridy and aluridy Ursidae are bear and elephant id means asian elephant primates japanese monkey and large felidae can be sometimes affected by this canine distemper virus domestic dogs including feral populations are considered to be the reservoir species in most if not all the locations so this point should be kept in mind that domestic dogs are considered as the reservoir species of the canine distemper virus hence named as canine distemper this distemper is due to its aggressive mood now the transmission of the canine distemper virus is mainly through inhalation or aerosol route during coughing or sneezing and indirect transmission is rare because the virus outside of the body is very labile pathogenesis of this canine distemper virus so this should be noted carefully that 
canine distemper virus how it causes the disease first of all canine distemper virus enters the body via the oral or the nasal route and note this route that canine distemper virus enters through the nasal route and go through the lymphoid replication in located in the lymphoid tonsils and orophenexal region and infects the macrophage in lymphoid duct to reach the heart after her reaching into the heart mononuclear cell associated viremia results in which virus have been administered into the biliary circulation and then perivascular infection occurs after perivascular infection it is located into various organs like piriform lobe <coughs> and infection via olfactory nerve to piriform lobes of the brain it affects at the end to the brain so in brain it has been localized and causes the neurological signs so here you can not notice that it enters through the respiratory system it means it 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 causes the respiratory signs to some extent and then it goes through the gastrointestinal tract towards the uh, heart it means it involves the gastrointestinal signs to some extent and uh, cardiovascular system affects it means it causes the vascular signs and then it enters into the nervous system and olfactory nerves means ke nervous system is also involved and brain and sometimes eyes are also affected so let's discuss the clinical findings of the canine distemper a transient fever usually occurs 3 to 6 days post infection it means this is the incubation period of this canine distemper disease so clinical signs as i already discussed that this disease is multi systemic and can it can affects the <coughs> elementary system respiratory system the ocular or the eyes skin or integumentary system and nervous system can be affected by this virus so if we talk about the elementary system clinical signs it will results in reduced appetite vomiting diarrhea and excessive re rehydration results and hypoplasia of the enamel if this disease occurs while the puppy is teething and exposing the brown colored dentine this is referred to as distemper teeth it means this is sharpened teeth etc and respiratory system affected results in coughing initially soft but later on harsh and accompanied by the expectoration of the mucus the owner may think of bone in the throat this this should be distinguished carefully and nose is dry with serous fluid coming out from the nostrils earlier in the disease nasal discharge becomes thicker and copious becoming mucopurulent or purulent respiratory system signs continues there is sneezing rhinarium becomes hyperkeratotic or cricket or pitted and auscultation and percussion of the chest reveal harsh bronchial or bronchial vesicular inspiration over the whole thorax and bacterial pneumonia is a secondary complication which arises later stages of the disease if persisted longer than now in this picture serious nasal discharge is seen which is a critical sign of this disease through the respiratory system eyes affected the conjunctiva are congested with purulent discharge small or copious which becomes crusted at the inner canthus and thick pus may adhere to the cornea and can be difficult to remove there may be ulcerative keratitis here you can see in this diagram mucopurulent ocular discharge if skin is affected by canine distemper virus on the skin of the abdomen or distemper pustules and this this create circular yellow to green pustules about 5 mm in diameter which is termed as impetigo and at the end 
heart pain diseases in skin hyperkeratosis is a common feature but not in all of the cases the pets are usually warm and tender initially the hyperkeratotic part may extend into the sensitive tissue thus making the dog lame when the pets are very hard they make distinctive noise that's why we call this hard pet now this is the hyperkeratosis of the food pet here you can see this is the hyperkeratosis <coughs> neurological signs if the virus in infects the nervous system it means the brain or other nerves then some of the clinical signs arise classic neurological signs which may include localized involuntary muscle twitching like myoclonus chorea flexor spasm and hyperkinesia convulsions including salivation and chew chewing movements of the jaw that's called chewgum fits this is a critical sign of the canine distemper virus which is mostly asked in competitive as uh, st paul service commission examinations that chewgum fits results in a which disease so you may answer that chewgum fits is a critical sign of the canine distemper virus or canine distemper disease you you may differentiate this disease from other disease by showing the chewgum fits other neurological signs may include circling head tilt nystagmus paresis to paralysis of the body focal to generalized seizures may appear so if we talk about the lesions of teeth then postmortem lesions may may found may be found to distinguish the cause of death between other diseases lesions may be thymic atrophy is a consistent post mortem finding in infected young puppies and hyperkeratosis of the nose and foot base is often found in dogs with neurological manifestations depending on the degree of secondary bacterial infection other lesions bronchopneumonia enteritis and skin pulchers may also be present on the dead bodies in cases of acute to peracute death exclusively respiratory abnormalities may be found other lesions just like histologically canine distemper virus produces the necrosis of lymphatic tissues necrosis means death and interstitial pneumonia and cytoplasmic and intranuclear endocrine bodies may be found in the respiratory urinary and gastrointestinal tract epithelium lesions found in the brains of dog with neurological complications may include neural neuronal degeneration gliosis non inflammatory demyelination perivascular cuffing non suppurative leptomeningitis and intranuclear endocrine bodies predominantly within the glial cells these may be the neurological lesions found in the dead bodies if if died due to canine distemper virus so the diagnosis of the canine distemper virus is based on clinical signs such as hyperkeratosis central nervous system signs like fits epilepsy paralysis conjunctivitis respiratory signs diarrhea and the prolonged illness fit on the buffy coat of the blood samples may diagnose or confirm the this, this disease inoculation of tissue culture with buffy coat layer for viral isolation neutralization tests and histopathology of the tissues may confirm the causative agent of this disease now distemper disease in dogs can be confused with other systematic infections just like the differential diagnosis of the canine distemper can be leptospirosis infectious canine hepatitis rocky mountain spotted fever and intoxicants such as lead or organophosphates can cause simultaneous gastrointestinal and neurological signs a febrile catarrhal illness with neurological sequelae justifies a clinical diagnosis of canine distemper so this should be kept in mind and now these diseases will be discussed in our later lectures that how to distinguish or what are the clinical 
aspects of these diseases which differentiates from the canine distemper. Treatment as the canine distemper disease is a viral disease and there is no specific treatment for the canine distemper but treatments are symptomatic and supportive which are aimed at limiting the sec secondary bacterial infections, suppurative fluid balance just like fluid losses in the uh, diarrhea and vomiting, controlling the neurological manifestations and treatment options include broad spectrum antibiotics to prevent from the secondary bacterial infections, balanced electrolyte solutions to rehydrate the body of animals, parental nutrition to support the nutritive requirements and some antipyretics, analgesics and anticonvulsants and good nursing care may, may be possible to control this disease. Now the prevention of this disease is possible in boarding kennels and hospitals discharge as many as possible segregate affected animals and in contact animals should be given a booster vaccination and wash the kennels with 0.3% quaternary ammonium, 0.3% rocal or rest the kennel, heat the room to kill the remaining virus as a disinfection. Prognosis depends on the stage of disease and the system which is affected but the prognosis is bad for those with fits but they can recover from paralysis, gave prognosis and severe diarrhea and pneumonia and continuous fever with weight loss. So prevent this animal going to neurological signs otherwise it may be difficult to recover. So the prophylaxis is through vaccination, distemper vaccine combined with leptospira, hepatitis parvo and parainfluenza and puppies get 3% of maternal hemoglobin in utero while 80% of the dam is obtained from the colostrums. Antibodies are excessive when at 12 weeks of age so puppies should be vaccinated. By summarizing this lecture, please be aware that this is highly contagious and can be passed from dog to dog through direct contact with fresh urine, billet or saliva. Other routes include sneezing, coughing and sharing the food and water bowels are a possible ways for the virus to be passed on. So these routes should, should be kept in mind and pre-segregates the affected animals from the healthy animals. Symptoms of the disease include fever, sneezing and coughing, thick mucus coming from the eyes and nose, lethargy and loss of appetite, sudden vomiting and diarrhea and ultimately depression and dehydration and emaciation may be found. In prevention, make sure your puppy for adult dog has had 3 to 4 vaccinations that were on time and puppies must be vaccinated from 6 to 8 weeks old and please keep your puppy or puppy or adults dog away from other dogs or any environment until they are finished with all their vaccinations up to date and also routine cleaning and disinfect tent of our home of your homes our kennel will ensure that the virus is not in your dog's living environment and also please make sure your puppy or adult dog's vaccinations are up to date this is the only way to prevent the infection in your dogs or the puppies. So thank you very much for watching my videos. For further upcoming videos, like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Take care.